Hey guys, it's Keisha here and it's been like uh, a really long time since I've been posting regularly. I needed a, a YouTube break, um, but now I'm over it, I'm better, I am feeling much more functional. So today I wanted to talk about some ingredients that can be found in products that are actually really bad for you and if you're not paying attention you don't notice. I'm really particular about what I use and I tend to read all the ingredients for everything. I kind of try to decide what I'm willing to deal with and what I'm not willing to deal with um, when it comes to makeup, but when it comes to products on my skin and in my hair, I get a lot more militant. So today I just wanted to talk about a couple items that I've come across, just some of the ingredients so that are in some of these products that you can keep an eye out for when you are buying in the store uh, if you want to stay as natural as possible and limit how much stuff you come into contact with that's bad for you. If you're new to looking at ingredients on your products, the higher up on the list, the more of it there is. So the bottom on the list, you know, that's got the least trace amounts. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was Afrogee's Keratin and Green Restructurizer. I read on like all these reviews about this thing online, it makes your hair so soft and it makes the curls like more defined and it's just amazing, amazing, amazing. So I was like, okay, I that's awesome, I'm going to look into it. The ingredients in this aren't horrible, like most of them are actually okay. The one that I am the most concerned about is PVP. It sounds like something you can catch. This is a spray bottle. The biggest issue with PVP is that if it gets into the lungs, it is possible that it can cause um, fibrosis. I have very highly sensitive lungs. I've had bronchitis a bazillion times. Uh, you know, especially after 9-11, I worked downtown um, when it happened, and so my lungs just weren't the same after that, but they were also just very sensitive prior. So anything that's going to potentially compromise my lungs, I'm like, hell no. I thought about it, I was like, well, what if I spray my hand and put it in my hair? But I was just was like, why would I even compromise, why would I even take that risk? Is it really worth your lungs, the health of your lungs? Not so much. So. This is getting the ass. I wanted to talk about um, Giovanni. I've loved Giovanni. Honestly, there's a lot of stuff that I really do like by them. And uh, this is their um, nourishing anti-dandruff conditioner because I've been having a lot of issues with my scalp over the past couple of months. I realized it after I did the side shave in my side shave video. I noticed that I had some patches of baldness there that like freaked me out. So I wanted to just maybe have something that would get rid of the extra like buildup of like dead skin or whatever on my scalp. And so I got this. Upon looking at the ingredients, it has sodium hydroxide in it. And the sodium hydroxide comes up relatively high in the list of ingredients. It's a form, of, it's lye, it's a form or a form of lye, um, and it's extremely toxic. So those of us who quit using relaxers know that old school relaxers used to be made with lye. Why would I think that there'd be sodium hydroxide in my conditioner? I wouldn't. I actually am the most furious about this product. It's Obsessive Compulsive Cosmetics, which is promoted as 100% vegan, 100% cruelty free. When you hear vegan cruelty free, you automatically assume that it's going to be natural and it's going to be safe. Um, I bought this without even hesitating, without even looking at the ingredients because I do have some of their other stuff, it's been totally fine. I just assumed that it would be responsible that they're responsible as a company and I've been looking for these for a minute. These are basically pencils that can be used on the lips as well as the eyes and anywhere else on the body that you like. When I saw it in Sephora this past week, um, I was like, ooh, yay. So then I got home and I was all excited and I was like, yay, I got my new lip liners, hey. When I go to put it on my lips, I smell, it's a smell that I used to find in old pencils back in the day before there were a lot of regulations in terms of what people were using or when before consumers got a little more particular about the toxins that were in cosmetics so the old pencils have this kind of actual like pencil-y smell I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about but it actually smells like pencils you write with um, 
it's a very strong scent. I smelled that the minute I went to go put this on my lips and I was like, wait a minute. So then I look at the ingredients. The second ingredient is talc. Talc is basically a mineral that has magnesium, silicone, and oxygen in it. There's some that are considered carcinogenic, meaning that it has some asbestos in it and others that don't. Naturally, it is said that the talc that you, you would find in most products, do, or all products, don't have asbestos in it. I mean, I don't think they're that psycho to have full-on asbestos, like, laced talc in our products. Problem is, there's been no definitive proof that the asbestos-free talc does not contain, like, trace amounts of carcinogens in it. So, a lot of foundations have talc in it. Uh, it's really great at drying. Uh, like creating a drier surface, which is why I'm assuming they use it in this because it's a lip liner and it's supposed to be matte. I have one foundation that has talc in it, but I use foundation, especially my powder foundation, very sparingly. It's more of a dusting to usually help set things. I don't really use it to cover my entire face and my neck and all of that. So for me, using a very trace amount of, of foundation that has some talc in it is not as bad, but Something like this, which goes on my lips when I eat, I will consume a small portion of, I'm not willing to take a risk with that. So not only does it have talc though, I'm not done. It also has methylparaben and propylparaben. Parabens have been a huge conversation piece for quite some time now. They are not good for you. It's been established that they're bad for you. That's why a lot of companies are posting paraben free on everything. For those of you who don't know about parabens, they are carcinogens. They are proven carcinogens that tend to collect in our tissue. So they can contribute to breast cancer. Um, there's been a number of patients who've been found to have parabens in their breast tissue. It absorbs into the body and it stays there. To find two parabens in this product, I was really angry. Products that promote like being all natural and then you read the ingredients and they're not even a little all natural, like they're a hot mess, there's a lot of bad stuff in it. That really pisses me off because it's false advertising. They're feeding on the fact that you want to be conscientious and healthy and then they basically swindle you. They like secretly slide in some really bad stuff. Speaking of parabens, uh, about a year ago or so, I did a video about my skin routine. And I talked about the micro group peel by Philosophy, and it's like a two-part kit um, that includes vitamin C, peptide resurfacing crystals, and then it comes with like a salicylic acid gel. So after the whole obsessive compulsive situation, I got really upset, and I was like, let me look at all the ingredients and all my stuff, I need to double check, because who knows what I've missed. Lo and behold. Crystals, this one, this kit, has every single paraben listed, all the parabens. It has isopropyl paraben, isobutyl paraben, butyl paraben, methyl paraben, and propylene paraben, all five. Now, they are the last five ingredients listed on this, and I would not put this on my body consciously in any amount. This one has two different parabens and urea in it. Now, urea is basically what's found in urine, uh, animals' urine. Any kind of urea is not good because uh, urea is known to um, release formaldehyde, and formaldehyde is a known carcinogen. So there are just carcinogens all over. I cannot use this in good conscience for my own health and well-being, and I did talk about it in one of my videos a long time ago, so I definitely wanted to go on the record and say that I'm not using this anymore, and um, if you care about things like this, then neither, neither should you. There are plenty of exfoliators out there that are more natural and like don't have a lot of these ingredients. I actually am in the market for new ones right now as we speak, but I will keep you guys posted on that. I hope you guys are enjoying the summer so far, um, and I will see you next time. Bye.